definitely want to know about this. All right. So yesterday you made 31 candles. Yeah. Out of, yeah. out of what did you make these candles out of? Can you show that to me? Yeah. Here. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, you, uh, that's just simple cans from the coffee, from the corn, peas. Yeah. Sure. Just like, what are, you, what are you eating? We just washed them. We took, I have no idea how it name, how it name the, what box is made from. Cardboard. Like you, cardboard. Cardboard. You, yeah, you cut just a cardboard, like a three, four centimeters, a long piece. And yeah, and you roll it and put it inside of the can and put the melted paraffin in. Uh, wax, P paraffin wax. We, we call it wax or paraffin. Uh, no, just yeah. uh, uh, wax and paraffin is just a little bit too different things, but I know. Um, in, in English, okay, so paraffin is one kind of wax. So there are different kinds of wax. There's like beeswax. Ah, okay. You know, paraffin. There's other kinds of wax. I don't know. Okay, okay. Tallow yeah. or something. Yeah. I feel, okay. We have, we, in Ukraine, it's the same. Just one of the yeah. wax type. So, because uh, it's, uh, when you do it like this, that's for the army. Oh, for the army? Yeah, for the army. Oh, I thought maybe you were preparing, you know, just in case you lose power. But this is this is to send send to the army, yeah. Yeah, my mother using them and other guys there. Yeah. Uh, because now she's we call it zero point. They threw her on the front. Wow. Okay, so let's take a step back yeah. for our viewers. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Because because I know this, but you but but our our people who maybe who are watching do not. Um, your mother is a a medic, a combat medic. Yeah. Uh, on the front line. Yeah. Um, and she she trained. She got certified by NATO. At, you told yeah. me this, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I mean, she actively did this so that she could join the fighting. Yes. You know, it's, she wasn't recruited. She was like, I want to fight. She went and got this training. Now, was she, what was her job before? Was she a nurse? Uh, no, or... she was an, uh, she was working like a cashier, oh, a wow. call center, mm -hmm. like in taxi wow. and help call center. Yeah. Uh, she studied all medicine. First half of our family is medical. Oh. Half of it. Oh, so okay. I, every time when I came in Gorodisha, I was in the hospital because my yeah. grandmother and other my part, part of my family work in there. And my mother grown in the hospital too. Ah, uh, okay. So like doctors or nurses, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And she got uh, three months or uh, one and a half months lessons. Of the tactic okay. medical help. Uh huh. And she got exam. And how did she do that? Um, <clears throat> did she have to go to like Kiev for that, or or did she no. do it in? Is she Krivari. where does your mother live? Krivari. Yep. So did she do that in Krivari? Yep. Okay. For for our viewers who don't know Krivari is the name of of uh, uh city. pretty 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 big ukrainian city that's um, the longest city in europe <laughs> yeah it's it's interesting it's the city it's it's south of here it's probably yeah. the closest city south of here how many people uh a million uh no actually a little bit less of the million oh, okay it's, uh, but uh it's long, but not very yeah. filled city because yeah. yeah, yeah. it's pretty dirty since it, it's the, a... But that's the thing that what you spoke about just now, it's it's the city itself is like 125 kilometers long. It's it, the whole city is along the river 
And it's just this, it's very long and narrow from north to south along this river. So for Americans- well, Actually, that, that it's would... not, that's what's strange. Cleaver Rock is not along the river. It's just built that way. Uh, mm. I will tell you now how long, mm -hmm. uh, we have a um, 634,000 people there. Oh, okay, okay, so half a million. 634,000, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's about 430 kilometers long. Whoa! <laughs> what? No, I thought 100... No, 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 many... wait, it's a diameter. Uh, oh, 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 that's total size. Second. Oh, good God, because, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus. I remember it's more than 200. It's a it's very long, like north yeah, to south. A... Yeah. And I I have um one student who who is from there. Um, and of course we know that uh, Vladimir Zelensky uh is from Kriveri. Uh it's uh, one hundred eighty six kilometers. Yeah, from north to south, one hundred eighty six yeah. kilometers. So 66, that's, that's 66. 66, I'm 66. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So that's that's basically 130 miles or more yep. than 100 miles. Yeah. And that's the longest city in uh, Europe. Crazy town. Crazy. Just. I was crazy. born there. I live yeah. there and I yeah. still get in lost there every time when I'm coming. I just. Yeah. What the hell am I? What the hell I am? God damn. It's it's a very strongly industrial town. Yeah, that's why not many people live in there because a uh, very many factories. Yeah. And how many were you getting charcoal under the ground? I don't know. We don't have a word for that. Um <laughs> Sorry, I will find the word now. Getting charcoal under the ground. Oh, coal. No, 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 not not charcoal. I think you mean coal. Mines. I think you mean mines. Mines, yeah. Yeah, there's so there's a and lot of mines, in, coal mines. We get in metal there too. Yeah. Not just a simple metal metal, colorful metal, yeah. and a, some of the very expensive ones. Huge, huge, huge amount of resources. You know, yeah. uh, uh, iron, aluminum, titanium, tungsten, yeah. Yeah. what we call so, rare earth metals, huge yeah. amount of resources. So where rain is raining, the ground, it's red. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that's because of iron, because yeah. there's so much iron. Like uh, in Milwaukee, in someone died here. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh no, it just it was just raining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, my cousin, he was working at one of the factories uh, with metal and charcoal. We name yeah. it Cox. Say it again. Cox and him. Oh. Chemistry, Cox. Cox. Okay. In in English, we have this word Coke. Yeah. Uh, or coke, which is yeah. used to make steel, and it's um it it's uh like like coal, it's it's basically charcoal. Yeah, that's used to make steel. Yeah, we call yeah. it coke. And he goes there very clean and nice, and he don't work in the most dirty sector. He worked with the computers, but his uniform every time black. Yeah, totally. Yes. I mean, black. It was light green. Now it's black. Heavy, so heavy night. industry. Yeah. Heavy industry. Heavy metal. Uh... <laughs> yeah. 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 That's about it. I say I was um, gonna talk about some other topics too about like that Ukraine. That's is... true. That's true. But I I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. you you've just said while we've been talking two pronunciations. Of, you said Krivi Ri and Krivi Ro. Uh, in Russian, it's Krivorog. Krivorog. In, 
in Russian. I'm Ukrainian. It's Krivirik. Krivirig. Okay. So Krivi Kriva Rog in Russian. That's Russian. Yeah. Kriviri. It's Ukrainian. In Ukrainian. And yeah. that's important, I think, for, for people to learn. Um, so mo many times when you see the letter I uh it, at the end of a word, um it's in in Russian it's pronounced O. Like mm -hmm. in 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 Ukrainian you say Kharkiv. Yeah. In Russian they say Kharkov. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, these are these different pronunciations. Yeah. So O in Russian, I in Ukrainian. Yeah. I yeah. in Ukrainian. So Kriviri. Yeah. And then the other thing is that the way you pronounce the letter G. These mm -hmm. are these are two differences, right? So you yeah. pronounce the letter G different, uh, like uh krivi ri yeah or krivi rog yeah good so the h yeah. that this this confuses me a in lot in ukrainian it's mostly h and in russian it's g yeah so this confuses me and a lot of uh american and and english speaking you know newscasters and youtubers how to pronounce these words because they're seeing two different pronunciations when they're you know they're reading different maps and, and it says the russian and then the ukrainian and then they listen and it's kriveri or kriverog and yeah. they do not understand how or why um the, uh, this is an important thing that g sound like g mm -hmm. uh and they're, yeah. they're both back here at the back of the throat. And um, a lot of languages like Danish, for example, Swedish, yeah. Arab, Arabic, these all these languages, um, they pronounce that letter G uh, very differently. Like in Swedish, the G, that G sound is pronounced like Y. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know. I, I just think it's an important point to make for our um for our native Channel. English speaking for our native yeah. English speaking viewers. Um anyway, um but for my dad it was pretty hard too. Why? Uh because the difference and like some of the words is pretty hard even to tell to say. Um, uh oh oh sure because yeah because Joe Joe is American and yeah. this like G is G yeah H is H yeah and how do you how do separating you... them is just like he said it's terrible it's terrible how do you, how, but how can you mix them up that's you know but but what I have learned studying languages is Ukrainian is not alone. Um, as I said before, yeah. the Danish language, the Swedish language, uh, and, and, you know, and also Ar different Arabic languages and dialects all have all kinds of pronunciations for G and <laughs> And I think it's just yeah. about how you use those muscles in the back yeah. of your throat. You know, like g, 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 g. I have a th I have a theory. This yeah. is my this is my theory that it has to do with um illness or disease. Which what I mean to say is uh in the winter when you're sick and it's cold. And yeah. and you have a cough and you're like, oh, 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 oh. you know, it's, those parts become bigger and they tight your throat from inside. And it's hard to pronounce 
those sounds. Yep. So for 500 or maybe a thousand years, maybe people in, in Denmark, Sweden, were they, maybe they were sick. Because in the winter, at least they were sick and, mm -hmm. and they had a cold and, and a lot of, a lot of uh, Europeans, especially people in Scandinavia like to joke about people in Denmark because they say it sounds like they have a cold because when they say that the G sound, it sounds like, <laughs> you know, um, but I experienced that myself as well in, in Belgium and the Netherlands, the way they pronounce that G sound is like this, like sound. I don't even know, like, you know, this cheese, uh, it's called yeah. Gouda. Yeah. Gouda. Yeah. I've been to the town, the village of, of Gouda in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I, and how they say it in, in the Netherlands is like, oh, I can't even, I need to like, I need to get sick. I need to have like, like a cold or something. And then I can say the word, but it's like, right. oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, to me, to my English ears, I'm sure that it, if we have someone, it was hurting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we have someone from the Netherlands who watches this, uh, I'm sure that you'll be offended. You should correct us in the comments. But <laughs> that's <laughs> um, this is a a very very interesting very interesting thing that I'm that I'm learning. Um, yeah. Uh, but I, I'm just curious about, so your mother is, so she is on the front lines right now. Yeah. And my father pretended not go to her war park. He going to join the army. He he wants to join the army. Uh, yeah. And if they will not take him as a soldier, he will go or going to teach, how, uh, learn how my mother like on becoming a Medic. A medic. Or, or he have a lenses. He's a car driver and mechanic. They can take him like this. Because yeah. in the army, the car drivers and mechanic, one of the most important people. Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to join in army yeah. too. As a, this is an interesting point because, you know, I, I mean, I want to join the army too. I, yeah, as you know, and I, I don't want to take him too, but he said I will do anything, just take him. Exactly, exactly, and and there's so many Ukrainians who are, you know, they're just doing this and they don't care, you know, it's not about. Uh, uh, <clears throat> some people in the Belarus and Russian asking like, your man's hiding there, like or. Does they walk in at all outside? And like, mom asks, like, why you think so? No, because of the war and all this, like, god damn it. Our man is a reason lines to, to the... To Seriously, there's a, there's a line there, yeah, every day, you know, I mean, I have so many... And not only from men. Yeah, no, women too, yeah. Absolutely. I have so the many. First day I go to of course. Me too. Me too. I, I first have... day of the war, I go on there. And I was walk, going there about four or five days in a row. Yeah. Because they didn't want to take me. They said, you're a girl. You're 17 year old. You're not even 18. Like, and I said, just put me in the list. Yeah. Just yeah. you don't supposed to take me. Just put me in the list. So just in case, take me on the train. Seriously, seriously, I I've applied uh, about five times now. My mother was going there about for two weeks. My mother and my uncle, yeah. they brother and sister. And one day go my mother asking about both of them. One day of my 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 uncle. 
one day my mother, one day my uncle. And then they, they had a bet. Like, if one of them will join the army, second one will stay home. So my mother, <laughs> so they took my mother, uh, he stayed home. Because in Ukraine, normally you don't, normally uh, from one family, don't go in the army more than one person. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, my parents go both of them because they have different surnames and they not marrying on the documents. Oh, okay. So that's uh huh. Mm -hmm. So they, that's like in Ukraine, you can more than one person from one family can go in the army only if second one or third one will volunteer. Uh huh. No one going to send them a message that you have to show up only if they volunteer. Or they don't take in, take very. Oh, yeah. no, it's not very. They can, uh, they're not going to take people in the army from the families where already someone died on the war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, have one family, father, like husband, wife, two kids, and like his mother. <laughs> uh, and, may, and maybe the brother, I don't know. <laughs> and even if the guy is 18 year old already if the father go to the army and he's died there yeah from that family they're not going to take in the army anymore interesting interesting because um when this family getting paid because uh not only paid uh because uh it's it's painful and many mothers like you know the woman lost her husband She's not going to let her son go anymore. Well, we have to look at, you know, it, this is a really important thing. Like, uh, what is the long, what are the long-term effects on our society of, of these, uh, you know, everybody going to war? My, my father-in-law, uh, Alexei, who, who you, you know, um, he, he said, you know, Russia is sending their worst people, the criminals, people with, yeah. you know, like, like terror and creep, just the worst people. Ukraine is sending their best. So, so what's not only the best, actually, Ukraine is not the best country. Many young people. Well, yes. And young people, many, especially. Yeah. Because at first, we had even a couple of social videos, like many people who older who still have Soviet Union in their mind mm -hmm. said that my ger generation, people from the 15 to 27 about, that is last generation, because that's my generation. Yeah. They call it lost. Really? Yeah, because they don't have nothing in their mind besides the technology and all that, you know. Yeah. Before was better and all that. Yeah. But in the same time, most people in the army is my generation now. Yeah. Yeah. But More people of 22, 21, 23, 25, 27, then 30, 35, 40, 46. Yeah. You know, I uh, my feeling is that the people who should be fighting in this war are people my age and older. Now, let me explain why. Because we're not going to make a lot of children. I'm not going to make any more children. <laughs> you know, Ukraine needs to have a future. And you and, and, and your generation... You're going to build that future here in Ukraine. And it's going to be an amazing, bright future. Uh, the These old people, you know, 45, 50, 50, 60 years old, let them fight. They should fight. They caused this problem, you know? Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, yeah. And one thing, what in Ukraine... No one knows a straight number of how many died. Yeah. Actually, it's less than Russians. That's only one. What I know. We know for that. Sure. We know that for sure. Yeah. yeah. But it's still a lot. And uh, 
sometimes just how we meet people who died. Like, you know, when someone, guys come in Gorodishia, there is police cars, some cars before with Ukrainian flags. Yeah. Like all the, all the road is free. All cars that was riding this way, they all go to the side. Yeah, this is something that and for, 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 for any go, viewers go who watch with this. The coffin, and many people, even I saw it in real life, even I did that. Many people, when saw that this go by with Ukrainian flags, Take go the on the knees. Take the knee. Yeah. I've done this myself. And I done it. I was at my job and all stores getting closed downtown. <clears throat> all people put the flowers by the road and all yeah. stand and standing oh, on yeah. their knees to the procession done. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I and I I've I've been honored to to be able to do that myself. I didn't know that it was happening. And then somebody said to me, or, uh, or my wife said to me, yeah, uh, I just got this message. You know, there's one of the one of the heroes, one of the soldiers, uh, is, you know, died and, and they're having a funeral and the cars are they have, they're driving through the city uh, to the cemetery. And 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 I saw and that's like 30 seconds. And I saw yeah. the cars and I was like, oh, and I you know we we all take the knee the entire village bends to the knee yeah. and and it's a just it's a it i cried i literally tears from my eyes because it was yeah and you don't know these people but still you so grateful to you, them you know uh, what they did what they yeah. sacrificed their lives for God, I, I will start crying even now. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Well, listen, uh, so we're coming up on our time where the power yeah. is going to be shut off. So so let's let's stop our video here. This was great. Yeah. Uh, so thanks bye, for everyone. sharing. Bye-bye. Baka baka. Or bye-bye. Bye-bye. Dobobachina. Right? That was great. <laughs> what does <laughs> it mean? What does it mean, Doba Bachina? See you next time. See you next time. Yeah, Doba Bachina. I want everyone, I want every, all of my viewers to learn that. Doba Bachina. All right. Awesome.